Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. And Milo's kicking in nice already, ain't it? So today we're gonna talk about lawn diseases. Can they cause brown spots in the lawn? Can they cause long-term damage? Can they kill it? Should you treat for them or just wait it out? And what's the best strategy for treating if you'd like to prevent those diseases? And when should you put that down? So in this video, I'm gonna give you some basics to consider and a bulletproof strategy for your lawn based on grass type. North, south, east or west, I've been working on lawns from Chicago to Tampa since 1997, and I've assembled some basic but relevant strategies that you can employ this weekend using products found at any local box store or delivered next day from Amazon. Hit that like button and let's get into it. Now before we go getting too crazy with this highly educational video full of fun facts and some spraying and praying, as well as a little spreading and dreading, I have a written resource for you that will fill in the blanks for you and answer quite a few of your questions. Click the link below and sign up for my free email tips. I send out free tips and email every single Tuesday and this coming week, I'll be sending out some tips that'll kind of answer questions that come from this video talking about lawn diseases, but also included in there, we have a bunch of free guides and one of those free guides is a guide to lawn fungus and lawn diseases. We talk about some of the different ones that attack different grass types, what time of the year, what to look for, as well as there are a few pictures, but the idea is, it's it's an extra resource for you to help you play lawn detective to understand, number one, are you susceptible to disease? And number two is, if you have brown spots in the lawn, could they possibly be caused by disease or some other problem with the lawn? So click the link below and we'll send you that free guide as well as a bunch of others. And again, you'll get those great email tips every single Tuesday. Now, as I sit right here today in Florida, late May heading into June, I'm actually in a seasonal transition. I'm coming out of a very dry, even drought ridden spring into what we call our summer rainy season, where we're gonna get rain every single day in the afternoon as clouds build. You can see here, I was out throwing down a little fertilizer over at the Freedom Factory over by there just a couple, two, three days ago. Look at those clouds building in the background there. That pretty much happens every afternoon here in Florida during the rainy season. Now here in Southwest Florida, our summer pattern is pretty much kicked in. We're getting rain just about every afternoon, sometimes in the morning. But the other thing that's on the rise is the humidity. It's very humid and sticky out here even early in the morning. Now for those of you across the middle of the country, what we kind of generically call the transition zone, you guys have had tons and tons of rain, but now your heat is on the rise, even up through the eastern seaboard. Lots of rain and now humidity is going up. You've had heat waves starting to come through and it's gonna get further and further into summer and the heat is going to continue to come up and be on the rise. Same thing in the Midwest. I was actually watching a Millennial Farmer video. This is one of his hats here. He's up in Minnesota, way up there, over by there in Minnesota. I can't do a Minnesota accent. <laughs> but I was watching one of his videos recently and he's mowing the lawn and he's like in full dandelion bloom right now. Whereas, you know, a couple hundred miles south of there, you guys were in dandelion bloom in early May. By the way, if you haven't heard of the Millennial Farmer, you should subscribe to his channel because he hates dandelions as much as we do. So you can kind of see that even though the country is a little bit different in how we're coming into our seasonal transition, we're all heading into that summer pattern. And that's when disease can strike, is during seasonal transitions. So why do we see disease during seasonal transitions? Well, it goes back to something called the disease triangle. As that great philosopher Jimmy Buffett taught us in his song, Fruitcakes, relationships, we all got them, we all want them, what do we do with them? Well, here we go, I'll tell you. The disease triangle are three points that need to come together in order for fungus to manifest itself into disease in your lawn. The first part of the disease triangle is the host. You've gotta have a host. And that's the part that we've all got, it's turf grass. Turf grass is the host. It can host the fungus that can manifest into disease. Now some hosts are more susceptible than others and sometimes that's dependent on the grass type you have and its growth habit, but other times it's just where you live. A good example would be gray or pink snow mold which infests Kentucky bluegrass after winter. You're not gonna find gray or pink snow mold in St. Augustine grass because well, St. Augustine grass just doesn't grow where it snows. Now the second leg to the stool or the second point for that disease triangle is the pathogen itself the pathogen has to be present in or on or around the host. So some of the more common pathogens that you may have heard of when it comes to turf grass are, for example, Rhizoctonia solani, which is called brown patch when it's in cool season lawns, or it's called large patch when you find it in warm season lawns like St. Augustine grass and zoysia. There's also Pyriculera gracia, which is also called gray leaf spot that infests pretty much all grass types, or Ceratinia homeoscarpa, 
which is also called Dollar Spot. Speaking of fruitcakes, don't those all sound like the names of college fraternities from 80s movies? Every Halloween, the trees are filled with underwear. Every spring, the toilets explode. Of course I'm talking about Delta, you twerp! Keep in mind, pronunciations are suspect. I'm doing the best I can over here. Now for the most part, you're not going to know if the pathogen is actually in, on, or around your lawn unless you've had problems with it in the past, or your neighbors have, or someone has told you that they've seen it in the area. And the reason it matters if your neighbors have it or if it's in the area is because these pathogens can be carried along the wind, they can be carried on shoes, they can be carried on equipment, animals can track them into your lawn, all different ways that these things can spread. And that's why it's important for you to understand and get a relationship with your local county extension service. These are offices that are like extensions of the local land grant university and they're in each county in most cases around the US and their job is to let you know they have actual hours open and blogs and information that they give out for homeowners as well as professionals to let you know what's going on in your area when it comes to things like diseases. The extension agents that staff these offices, they're out on lawns in your local area, usually weekly, sometimes daily. Again, sometimes it's with professionals, but a lot of times it's with homeowners, but they will know exactly what's going on in real time. And so one of the things you should always realize is if you find brown spots in the lawn and you think it could be from disease, take pictures, call your local county extension, see if they have open hours for you. Some of them will take emails or read their blogs and see if they're giving alerts to things that are happening in your area right now. Now the third leg of that stool or the third point of that triangle is actually the environment. And this is the one where I talked about that's key to seasonal transition. You see, because the other two, the host and the pathogen, they're always gonna be in your lawn. Obviously your host is always there and the pathogen can always be there too. But if the environmental factors don't come together in the right way, you may never see that disease manifest. Now the environment needed for the disease to manifest is a little bit different depending on the disease itself. I mentioned pink and gray snow mold earlier with Kentucky bluegrass. Well, that forms under cloudy conditions. Snow cover helps to hold in humidity close to the ground, but it's not necessary. But the temperature conditions it favors are between 33 degrees Fahrenheit and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas brown patch and large patch, that's the rhizoctonia I mentioned. It's more of a later spring, early summer disease that favors day temps near 90, with night temps over 60 for sure, and raging when the night temps are near 70. One thing most of them have in common though, is high humidity. Now we're not gonna get into terms like relative humidity here, but just know that as humidity is on the rise with nighttime temps on the rise, and definitely daytime temps as well, just know that that means the environment for disease is really raging and that's a time you should be concerned. Now one caveat I wanna offer here, not all lawn diseases need to be treated with fungicide. There are some diseases that are a disease of the leaf. If it's a disease of the leaf, meaning it doesn't really affect the crown of the plant or the roots, think of the crown of the plant like the crown of your head. Remember Jack and Jill went up the hill and Jack fell down and broke his crown? Well, when Jack breaks his crown, he's in trouble. Now the crown is where your hair grows out of as a human. And again, if you break that, that's a bad thing. For the grass plant, the crown is where the blades grow out of. So if the crown gets infected, you got a problem. And definitely if the roots get infected, you have a problem. But for diseases of the leaf, all you really have to do is push those out with nitrogen. More nitrogen, grow it out like a bad hair dye job. Now there are diseases that affect the meaty parts of the plant, like I said, the crown and the roots, and those do need to be treated with fungicides. And the one that I'm gonna be treating for today, large patch, rhizoctonia, is one of those diseases. I'm also concerned about gray leaf spot, which affects the leaves and the crowns. So that's another one that I've seen in my St. Augustine that I'm gonna be treating for today. And when I say treating for, I mean putting down preventative measures. Again, I've got a resource for you when you sign up for the email that gives you a lot more in depth depth on some of these different ways that these diseases can manifest, so make sure you get that. But I'll tell you right now, if you have zoysia, St. Augustine, or centipede warm season grasses, or cool season grass across the transition zone, turf type tall fescue, even up to the east and into the Midwest, you definitely wanna put down a preventative for that rhizoctonia, large patch, brown patch, as you're coming into seasonal transition, which for most of you is right now. And 100% for sure I need to because I had rhizoctonia in my lawn last fall. Down here in Florida, because our growing season is pretty much year round, rhizoctonia hits us in the spring and in the fall, and even kind of lasts over winter, depending how far south you are. So again, if you have those grass types, I recommend you use this bulletproof strategy as a prevention and you get it down right away. 
All right, now you guys have seen this before, the bulletproof strategy. I'm gonna give you a couple little extra options that I maybe not have talked about in last year's video. Just so you guys know, I've said this before, I'm kind of like an eighth grade teacher that teaches the same exact subject every single year. I just try to freshen it up a little bit one way or the other so number one, I don't get bored with it, but number two, so the students get don't get bored with it because a lot of you guys keep repeating eighth grade for some reason. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean it that way. That was terrible, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that as a, wow. Don't thumbs down me. Okay, so the bulletproof strategy, what it basically is, is it uses two modes of action fungicides. So when I say modes of action, what I mean are ways that the product or the chemical or the active ingredient works. Different modes of action are grouped into different, well, groups. And the two that are easiest to get for homeowners are, first of all, this group 11. You guys have all seen Scott's Disease X, which interestingly enough, is cheaper to buy on Amazon with Prime Delivery. It's cheaper that way than it is to go to Home Depot and get it. I don't know why, but hey, good job, Scots. This is a granular formulation of a group 11 herbicide called azoxystrobin. This exact formulation, concentration, everything about it is exactly the same things that pros use today on the road. The only difference is this is a different packaging. And you can see here, Piso Nido is 10 pounds and it treats 5,000 square feet. Well, up to, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And now the second active ingredient, this is a group three fungicide. This is called propiconazole. And you can see this one here is also Pedo Nido 10 pounds and treats up to 5,000 square feet. Now in this case, these are both granular products. In the past, I had recommended that you use your propiconazole in liquid. And you can still do that if you like the hose in sprayer option. I kind of like the idea of going granular with one and liquid with another. But really, if you prefer, because a lot of you guys have told me you just prefer to do everything in granular, you go granular Scots, group 11, granular. This is uh, Bio Advanced. None of this is sponsored. These are just what I find at my local stores here. I'll link them also to Amazon so y'all can get them but propiconazole, so granular, granular. Now do not mix these in the hopper together. Please don't do that, you will not get a consistent application. Do two separate walks across the lawn. I just wanna point out, I had mentioned I am treating or preventing for here rhizoctonia, which is large patch, brown patch. It's the same thing. It's the same pathogen, and that's the big target that I'm looking for today. And again, if you've got turf-type tall fescue, or if you have zoysia, centipede, or St. Augustine grass, I highly recommend you go with this preventative strategy ASAP. Real quick, because some of you like to be like professional, and you like the professional formulations, I'll point out this is propiconazole here. You can see there, group three. This is 14.3%. Uh, this is Propiconazole, this is a very concentrated version and you just mix that in water and a pump sprayer. And then here is Eagle. Eagle is not Propiconazole. Eagle is a different active ingredient, but it is also a group three fungicide. So it's not like applying this one and this one is gonna do much difference. It's either or here. But if you like Eagle, I do like Eagle. It's an excellent fungicide. This can also be mixed in a pump sprayer and sprayed. But for ease of use today, because I really like to talk more about store-bought products, what I'm gonna do, I'll treat one section as I always do, just for purposes of the video here. I will treat my entire lawn though, but I'm just gonna show you the granular options. If you wanna see me do it with the granular plus the liquid, I'll link to last year's video where I did the bulletproof strategy that way. One thing we always wanna look at, I am preventing. I do not have active disease spots that I can see. So always read the label. I'm going with the preventative rate, which is two pounds per thousand square feet. And remember, it's a 10 pound bag, so at two pounds per thousand square feet, that's where I'll get the 5,000 square feet of coverage here. If you were doing a curative, you can see the curative rate is four pounds per thousand, it's double. So curative would be if you have active disease in the lawn, you double up the rate. We'll go over here to the propiconazole, and you can see the same thing. The preventative rate is two pounds per thousand square feet. And again, that's why this bag here will cover 5,000 square feet. The Scott's spreader settings are on every one of these bags here. And you can see here, Scott's Deluxe Edge Guard two pound rate is a 4.5. And obviously this is a Scott's product. So their preventative rate on the broadcast spreader they want you to put it on two and a quarter. So there you go. It's all over now, except for the spreading and the dreading. Let's go and throw her down, boys. Let's hope for the best. Sorry, I got a little carried away there. I wanted to get out and start trying down. But uh, I got to just show you the measurements here. So I got my property map here. And so I'm actually going to be able to get section two over there and section three done with uh, one bag of each because this is 2,000 square feet and that over there is 2,500. So that's 4,500. And I'll have just a skosh left over when I'm done. Now it's time to go and throw her down.
Some of you had mentioned or asked about my EDC in my last video. This is actually a custom that I got from my friend Stompin' You Customs. And uh, I'll tell you what, you know you're a true lawn care nut when you actually have fertilizer prills, or in this case, disease control prills, stuck up here in your jimping. I always get winded when I apply. It's good exercise and I'm old. But uh, I wanna say this is a very low use rate. You can see I'm on, you know, two and a quarter there. And uh, it feels like almost nothing's coming out. I'll do a shot where I go straight at it. There's not a lot that's getting thrown out. The reason I feel this is important to mention is because some of you are throwing down Milo and you're throwing that down at 12 pounds per thousand. So you can see like buckets of the stuff coming out. Then you switch to this, which it's a light prill that you can't see as well as well as it's only two pounds per thousand. So, man, I'm out of shape. <laughs> so, so you're gonna feel like nothing is coming out. You're gonna be tempted to crank it up. Don't do that, don't waste the product. Just go with what the label states. Again, you know you, your measurements, you know, like I should be not quite halfway done because this is 2,000 square feet. I can see I'm not quite halfway done. I got 2,500 left. I'll have a little bit left when it's over. Again, use your common sense. Use your experience that you've gotten from applying other things, but do not make the mistake of equating this to feeling like a Milo throw. It's not even close. It's much, much less of a rate. Okay, well, it's about uh, 45 minutes later. Wife called me in for some breakfast, so. And actually, you can see I've talked about talked about how the clouds build. See them building up there? That's the storm clouds starting to build now. That's our summer pattern. See these? Now, these aren't gonna break. They'll keep going across the state, but eventually, they'll build and they'll fill up over, to, over the daytime, and then we'll get rain in the afternoon. We're gonna throw down the group three here. Now, this has a different setting because that tells me the pearl size is probably a little bit different. And let's see, the setting here is a 4.5. For sure, look at this, these look like grape nuts. So this is the, so this here is the Scott stuff that's left over in the corner there. And then that's the uh, propiconazole, so it's more like grape nuts. Don't eat it, kids. Now, just to answer a couple final questions, the answer is yes, you should water these in, especially these granulars, they need to be watered in so the grass can take them in and work systemically. And as far as how often should you retreat? Well, again, if you've had problems with the disease in the past, you should retreat every 21 to 30 days. If you've never really had a problem before, but you're just concerned or you've seen it with neighbors, you could probably treat twice in the spring and be fine. But here in Florida, I mean, our hot and, con our hot and humid conditions, they, they continue all through the year. And I've seen gray leaf spot go all summer. So you kind of just got to monitor things and keep going, but every 21 to 30 days to retreat. But again, don't get crazy and slather the earth with chemicals. I don't want to be known as the chemical nut. I'd rather just be known as the lawn care nut. So use common sense and be logical in your treatment. So there you go, guys. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, please hit that like button and consider sharing this video. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut, and I'll see you in the lawn.